How's it going everyone? Ben here, your friendly neighborhood transgender med student. And today we're going to be talking about top surgery, nipple sensation, kind of what to expect based on the different uh, forms of surgical techniques when it comes to a nipple preservation and um, whether or not you would be a good candidate for a specific type of surgery and what your overall desires are post-surgery. So I think nipple sensation is a big part of deciding what kind of top surgery you want done, especially because if that's something that's very, very important to you. Um, for me uh, and some other trans people, we don't really care much about uh, nipple sensation, whether it be that we didn't experience a lot of sensation from before, so or that we don't get a lot of pleasure from nipple stimulation so we decide to opt into surgical methods that are that are more aesthetically appealing to our own eyes as patients while other people nipple sensation is something that's a huge part of their identity a huge part of their life pleasure um, and preserving that sensation as much as possible is very important so i think before you decide which top surgeon to go to, which surgical method that you want. Nipple sensation should be a, a component of what you're looking for as far as top surgery results. It's not just the aesthetic results that you should prioritize. Now, before I delve into the types of surgery, some of the drawbacks and strengths of certain types of uh, top surgery surgical techniques, I want to emphasize that nipple sensation is three different forms of sensation. It's the um, temperature based sensation, uh, whether or not you can feel heat and cold. There's also a uh, tactile sensation, which is whether or not you can feel someone's touch or something rubbing against your chest. And the third one is pain. Pain is also something that's very important because if you don't experience pain, how are you gonna know that, hey, my chest isn't normal right now i need i should get it checked so just know that when it comes to figuring out which surgical technique you want done which affects your nipple sensation you have to take into account how it will influence those types of sensations that i talked about in this previous video and luckily enough um, there doesn't seem to be a big difference in uh how each three of them differ based on the type of surgery you get done but the three types of sensation is largely influenced by your nerve, your your uh, the ability for your nerves to be preserved and how much nerves are being preserved. So I know there's a ton of different types of surgical techniques for top surgery, but I'm going to be covering the most uh, well-known ones. So when it comes to the most nipple preser pres sensation preservation possible uh, among the top surgery types, the two biggest ones are the periolar and the keyhole methods. Uh, what's really, really beneficial with these periolar and keyhole methods is that your nipples really don't get uh, cut and then replaced with a graft. Um, the surgeon does their best to make sure that the nipple doesn't need any manipulation. It doesn't need to be moved around. It usually just stays where it's at. There's not a lot of removal of nerve tissue. Uh, usually people who get these types of uh, top surgery techniques uh, the nipples are preserved. So you're going to be able to experience sensation uh, that much more faster than someone who were to get a graft from like a double incision uh, top surgery, which is the type that I got with the two horizontal scars across the chest. So that sounds amazing. Why doesn't everyone else use these two surgical methods? Well, the downsides are there. there's actually not a lot of people that can actually qualify for these two types of surgeries because of the way that the surgical techniques are done. You need smaller chest sizes. So if you are over a B cup, you're more, most likely not going to qualify for a periolar or a keyhole method. And if you do push for your surgeon to do this on you, the, the surgeon is going to not recommend it because aesthetically it's not going to give the results that you're looking for because there's going to be way too much skin tissue if you have uh, any chest size longer than a B cup. Not longer, larger <laughs> than a B cup. Um, I definitely had um, breast tissue that was uh, bigger than a B cup, so I needed the uh, double incision method. But also, uh, let's say you opt in for periolar or keyhole but you don't like the look of your nipples and you want it to be redone 
that can also further reduce your uh, nipple sensation post-surgery. So those are things to take into account. Uh, another method that could have some leeway in slightly bigger chest sizes, and that's the inverted T method. However, a lot of people don't like the uh, aesthetic appearance of the scars with the inverted T method. And maybe you can push a B cup, but you definitely can't. Uh, most surgeons will not recommend the inverted T if you have C cup or higher. So what if you need a nipple graft similar to what I needed when I got the double incision method? It doesn't mean that you will never have sensation of your nipples. I really, really want to discourage this idea that you will lose complete sensation of your nipples. That's not true unless you have some sort of malnourishment or autoimmune condition that can prevent the regeneration of your nerves, which is a very small amount of people. And if you're considering top surgery with those risk factors, uh, obviously this, this is beyond the scope of this video and it's a discussion you have with your surgeon about uh, that. So, uh, regardless of whatever technique you get done, regardless of whatever, uh, periolar, inverted T, uh, double incision, you will not experience much sensation between the first 6 to 12 months of surgery. This is very normal. You shouldn't feel abnormal when it comes to not feeling anything within that first 6 months to a year. I want to emphasize this because I had a bit of disassociation um because of this because i didn't regain any form of nipple sensation until six months of my surgery so i had complete numbness all over my chest but when the six month sensation started the only sensation that i experienced was pain and that was very very rough the first year this was really kind of like a profound experience for me because before I had top surgery my nipple sensation was almost non-existent I didn't um, I didn't really feel anything on my chest or like any type of sensation maybe pain but no one's ever messed with me to that point where I felt that but um I realized I was experiencing heightened sensation and that first year sometimes it got a little bit uncomfortable i would have to like stretch out my chest every now and then because the pain sensation was getting so so intense it wasn't until a year and a half into my surgery where i started developing other forms of sensation even ero erogenous sensation pleasure sensation around it but it still wasn't directly towards my nipples it was the area around my nipples in a year and a half at two years is when I realized that my pleasure sensation wasn't directly on my nipples, but any sensation around my chest was super, super sensitive. And like I've said before, I've never experienced sensation like this before. And it was a nice, it was a nice treat. So even though I did have double incision, I gained sensation <laughs> after top surgery. Now that I'm two and a half years uh post post surgery i finally am getting pretty good robust responses with nipple sensation and i'm getting all four types of all all the types of uh, sensation i talked about before earlier in this video but every now and then i will get that discomfort pain feeling so they're still healing so that's a little bit about my experience. I'm sure everyone else's experience is different reg uh, regarding what kind of surgery type that they had, but that's my experience after having a graft done with a double incision. Now, this last part of this video, I want to talk about how you can make sure that regardless of whatever type of surgery you get, how to get as much nerve healing as possible after top surgery. Remember, that regardless of the periolar and the keyhole and the nipple preserving methods will still shear some nerves uh, when it comes to that surgery type and with the nipple any 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 type of surgery where you need nipple grafts done all the nerves will be sheared and then reattach which means the nerves have to heal all over again so research studies have shown that the best way to make sure that nerves heal Yes, nerves can heal. Some nerves are can never heal, like nerves in the brain. But a sensation nerves are peripheral nerves. They have the ability to heal, especially if they're reattached or um, they they suffer acute trauma, not massive trauma. So 
in order to make sure that these nerves heal properly and don't die off so you can preserve as much sensation as possible studies have time and time shown again that nutrition is a huge huge aspect of that most specifically your fat soluble vitamins vitamins a d e and k are super super important when it comes to nerve preservation and nerve healing but also another supplement that's been shown in numerous studies to have some beneficial impact on nerve healing are omega-3 fatty acids which are usually the oils we find in fish so what i always recommend to people when they are concerned about you know trying you know we're going to take a hit when it comes to our sensation when we choose to do top surgery there's no denying that and unfortunately that's going to cause a lot of distress for us uh, especially for people where it's a really important part of who they are and how they enjoy life. So uh, what we want to do is try to regain as much as possible. So it's really good to have a robust diet, but also um, most Americans have a hard time making sure that they get enough vegetable, enough veg vitamins. So it's always a good idea to take a multivitamin. I know there's studies that show that multivitamins are obsolete, obsolete if you have a good nutrition plan, but at the end of the day, I can never tell if I'm getting enough nutrients. Regardless of how many whole foods I eat, I, I want to make sure that after surgery, I'm, I'm healing to the best of my ability. So I take a daily multivitamin, I take my vitamin D, just because um, previously, even before top surgery, I've always had a little bit of a vitamin D deficiency. And lastly, I always take fish oil supplements, which are the omega-3 fatty acids, not just for preserving my nerves, but omega-3s have been shown to help patients with ADHD, which I have, help patients with depression, improve cognition, and reduce the risk of dementia and Alzheimer's. And lastly, it helps with your blood um, blood lipids, which tends to increase when someone is on testosterone. Unfortunately, there's no magic medicine or magic pill that helps nerves heal as much as possible, but exercise, nutrition, being well balanced as an individual will allow your nerves to heal as much as possible. And uh, I, I really want to emphasize patience because I know it can be very, very frustrating the first couple of years after top surgery, just because it takes so long for that swelling to go down. It takes so long to finally be happy in our skin. But at the end of the day, after about six months to a year of my top surgery, I have never looked back. I am the happiest man I could ever be as far as my transition. And I, I, I honestly am very content with my life and my surgery results. And I can't wait to see how um, not just my sensation, but how things change over the years, whether it be through aging or whether it be through how I take care of my body and myself. Lastly, I want to emphasize that nerves are deeply impacted by uh, conditions such as um, type 2 diabetes and smoking. So if you are a patient with diabetes, it's very important to make sure that your diabetes is under control through lifestyle modifications and also taking your diabetes medications if you are prescribed them, making sure your A1C levels are low. And also if you uh, smoke uh, regularly, it's best to avoid smoking as much as possible because smoking can reduce your uh, healing response after a traumatic event that happened. So uh, to avoid those two things, to maximize your healing, not just nerve healing, but scar tissue healing and all other forms of healing. Anyways, that's all for this video. I hope you learned something about uh, nipple sensation preservation and how a nerves heal over time. And I hope this will help you understand uh, your surgical results, but also understand on how best to take care of yourself after having surgery. Anyways, uh, if you are having top surgery in the near future, best of luck. I am rooting for you and I hope this video has helped you. I hope that you'll share this video with someone who may benefit from this information. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter to keep up with my daily life and activism work and I'll see y'all in the next video. Mwah! This is Ben.